just the ultimate trust right there. Everybody trusting each other, and that's, you know, where all 11 are playing like one, that's where you start to make really good plays. They ain't cut. Yes, they did. They must have cut me. There's a situation breaking out in the aftermath of the Dallas Cowboys victory versus the Seattle Seahawks. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! Proved myself to you at this point then check this out on Thursday night football These are all the people that made money by following my prize picks for free on Instagram I give out my picks for free each and every night and if you end up tailing me and hit green I shout you out like this right now when you use my promo code microphone You could double your deposit up until a hundred dollars on prize picks and thank you prize picks for the sponsor Mic check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? Jamal Adams was the sixth overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. He was selected by the New York Jets this freaking high because of his abilities as a dual threat safety. I know this sounds insane, but there was once a point where Jamal Adams was known for being a remarkable safety in coverage, while also being incredible when it came to stopping the run and blitzing the QB. And throughout the first three seasons of his career. Jamal Adams looked like a generational player, becoming an All-Pro and a Pro Bowler in his second year with the New York Jets before becoming a first-team All-Pro and Pro Bowler in his final season with the New York Jets. But since the New York Jets were a dumpster fire, Jamal Adams demanded a trade. And this was actually one of the first trades we've ever covered on this YouTube channel. I think it was before we even hit 100,000 subscribers. The New York Jets would trade Jamal Adams and a 2022 fourth-round pick to the Seattle Seahawks for Bradley McDougal, a first round pick, a third round pick in 2021, and a 2022 first round pick. And at the time, people were saying that the New York Jets lost this trade. I mean, you quite literally traded as already became a two-time All-Pro within his first three seasons in the NFL. He hasn't even hit his prime yet. The Seattle Seahawks got a bonafide superstar. Now, at first it appeared that way, but it seems like something changed for Jamal Adams. The Jets sold high perfectly on Adams. As in 2020, he regressed mightily as a coverage safety. And the best way I could really quantify this would be pro football focus. And if you take a look at his pro football focus grades in 2019, you can see across the board, remarkable in run defense, pass rush coverage, and just overall. In the same amount of coverage snaps with the 2020 Seattle Seahawks, he became a coverage liability, earning him the infamous moniker of Blitz Boy. Now, to Jamal Adams' credit, he had nine and a half sacks with the Seattle Seahawks in his first year. He still was a pro bowler. He still was an all pro, but that would be it. Jamal Adams would play in 12 games in 2021, wouldn't look like the player that he once was, be injured for all of 2022, and he would return in 2023, where so far he's okay, I guess, but more or less, people still make fun of him for the same thing. He no longer was the superstar he was on the New York Jets. And you could point out to a myriad of different reasons. It could be the Seattle Seahawks defensive scheme. It could be the fact that Jamal Adams got the bag and doesn't care anymore. Whatever the excuse, the proof is in the pudding. Jamal Adams has a reputation for getting absolutely toasted in coverage. Now on Thursday night, the Seattle Seahawks faced off against the Dallas Cowboys in truly a remarkable contest. I mean, aside from the referees screwing things up periodically, I don't think there was a single punt in that game. Like as a fan of the game of football, it was truly a pleasure to sit back and watch Geno Smith and Dak Prescott performing incredibly. Geno Smith was dismantling a top three defense in the NFL and Dak Prescott was right there keeping pace with him. It was truly a joy to watch, but in the midst of this game was a back and forth between the Dallas Cowboys tight end, Jake Ferguson 
Ferguson and Jamal Adams. Now talking trash in the middle of football games is what makes football so awesome. I mean, Lord knows I have like 15 videos on this YouTube channel about the most epic trash talking moments in NFL history. And if I'm missing any, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to cover some more for you. So in the midst of this fantastic contest featuring the very underrated Seattle Seahawks defense that recently made a huge trade for Leonard Williams, has an upcoming superstar like Devin Witherspoon that's being paired with Bobby Wagner. At a specific point in the game, Quandre Diggs lays a very big hit on Jake Ferguson and then starts to talk trash, which Fair enough, I don't blame Quandre Diggs for doing so. He's been having a very meh season so far, and he typically is incredible. And getting that type of hit on Jake Ferguson and setting the tone for your defense, especially when men really get physical with one another, naturally there's gonna be some chirping. Jamal Adams finds a way to get in the middle of this conversation, which prompts Jake Ferguson to stare him down at the end of this entanglement. It would literally be like poetry in motion when the final touchdown of the game would be Jake Ferguson in, leaping in front of Jamal Adams to put the Cowboys up by three points. The Dallas Cowboys end up winning. It was a beautiful game that really could have gone either way. And honestly, I give props to both teams because it was excellent football. But a side story of this is Connor Hughes, a reporter, quote tweeted the highlight of Jake Ferguson scoring a touchdown on Jamal Adams and just said, yikes. And Jamal Adams' clap back was... Uh, and Jamal Adams' clapback, in my opinion, was a little sad. And I mean, maybe you could say I'm biased in this particular instance. I feel like there's a classy way to talk trash and there's just stuff that you don't do. And in this case, Jamal Adams decided to go after this reporter's wife and tweeted a picture of them two together and said, yikes, with that emoji and said, hashtag Prez, which I understand Seahawk fans saying, hey Mike, if the reporter is trolling Jamal Adams, why can't Jamal Adams troll back? I mean, the reporter's trolling Jamal Adams for his play. And Jamal Adams kind of went below the belt here going after the reporter's wife. Now Jamal Adams would delete the tweet, but at that point, the damage was done. Brian Costello, a Jets reporter said, I've covered a lot of players throughout the years. Never met a guy that was more of a phony than Jamal Adams. I always thought he was a bad guy. Today, he proved he is even worse than I thought. One of my favorite meme pages, Ghetto Gronk, posted this picture of Jamal Adams. I don't want to get this wrong. I think that's his mom. I'm assuming that's his mom, I guess in some sort of revenge post, which I guess you could say is just as low as what Jamal Adams did, but I guess as we would say as second graders, he started it. At the end of the day, I think we could agree on one thing. If you cook a person so badly that he has to go all the way below the belt and attack the appearance of the woman that you're with, in my opinion, you succeeded at getting to him and triggering him. I feel like Jamal Adams is really insecure about the fact that he hasn't been the same player since leaving the New York Jets. I feel like there's a chance that he even regrets the fact that he left the New York Jets. Can you imagine Jamal Adams, like 2019 Jamal Adams, on the New York Jets, Sauce Gardner and Quinnen Williams and CJ Mosley coached by Robert Sala? I mean, I'm sure like things would have been different and maybe they wouldn't have selected Sauce Gardner, but at the end of the day, man, I don't understand why players like Jamal Adams don't sit back and say, I'm a multimillionaire. There are times where I get destroyed on the football field field and I should just own up to it and move on and not try to go below the belt and insult people personally. I don't know. I just think it's a very classless thing to do for a guy that just shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff, but maybe I'm too sensitive. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.